glory back to God. And uh, please, you can get seated on our beautiful floor. In fact, it doesn't look bad at all. You know, I was, uh, when I saw when they were scratching and, and hitting the floor, I thought today we are just going to sit on the rubble of things. But it doesn't look bad. So that means you guys, we, we can use this floor forever? No? You know, there is a, a program on Discovery Channel. It's called, uh, I've forgotten. Uh, it's made out of destruction. It's, it's a program called Made Out of Destruction. Beautiful things that you see, like glasses, like uh, sometimes things in the car come out of destruction. So something bad come out, uh, come something good. So we, we also trust the Lord that um, something beautiful is going to come out of this floor. Amen. Now let's bow our heads and, and, and pray before we enter into the word of God. Our heavenly father will just give you all the praise and all the glory. You are the king eternal. The Lord who helps us who give us strength, whose blessing we harbor in through your blessing. We can be proud and we claim great things. And by your blood, we can shout hallelujah because of that great mercy that was shown through the blood of Jesus that, sanctif that sanctifies us of every sin and presents us before you holy and righteous. We thank you, Lord, for the blood. We thank you, Lord, for the cross. We thank you, Jesus, for the resurrection. Amen and amen. Let's give God a mighty hand clap. Now, um, last week we were celebrating the, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm not going to be very far um, in talking about uh, the resurrection. But th this time around, I'll, I'll talk about it from a different angle so that we may, we may be blessed looking at the pictures of Christ from the Old Testament. Now let's read Colossians chapter 2 and verse 16 and 17 if possible. Colossians. All right, I'll read it here. Okay, Colossians, don't mark. Colossians. Colossians chapter 2 from verse 16. Therefore, now, well, well, let me begin um, from verse 13. From verse 13. I'm going to read. It says, when you were dead, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your heart, your sinful nature, God, now that word is God, it is God who made you alive with Christ. Wow, I love these scriptures. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God, you can just get a pause, God made you alive, made us alive with Christ. God, with Christ, through the cross, 
made us alive. Now, the word alive means to live, to have life, not only to exist, but to have dominion and to live a life full of hope, a life full of comfort, knowing that we are not orphans, and also knowing that we are rulers. That's what the, 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 this is what the Bible is trying to, to say when it says he made us alive. Because there are so many people who are alive, but not alive in such a way the Bible is trying to indicate here. Here we are alive, living, ruling, having life in abundance. So it says, but God made you and me, we who once were living but had no life, because anything would blow you away, even sin and I mean sickness, the devil, the, the demonic oppression. So we are, li we are alive but dead inside of, inside of us. So God made you alive with Christ. That is one. Number two, he forgave us of all our sins. He forgave you all your sins, that is past, present, and future. He forgave you. He said, and you, he wrote it off. May the Holy Spirit open our eyes the spiritual eyes to understand the depth of the meaning of this scripture so that we may have life in Christ, a life free of guilt and condemnation, but a life which experiences the joy, the love, the mercy of God and the, uh, and the peace of God that comes along with it. All this comes from the knowledge of knowing. And then he goes on saying, number one, he made us alive. Number two, he forgave us all our sins. He did this in verse 14. Having canceled, he canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us, having canceled the written code, the law, which was written on stones, which God said, if you obey this, then I will bless you. But in case you don't obey, you remember what God told Moses? Blessed is anyone who will obey it, who will obey the law. But by law, nobody would be found righteous, and as a result, it stood opposing us. Each time you wanted to pray, it would tell you, no, you are not righteous. You, are, you cannot stand before God. You don't have what it takes to ask from God. You are not a son. You are not a child of God. Remember, remember, the law would remind you of your sinfulness. The law of God would remind you your nature would put, put you back in your position. And as a result, you would find yourself someone who came with zeal to pray to God, and suddenly, inside you, as you are praying, the Lord reminds you of your position. And then, you start to bring down your, your hands, and you say, oh, no, God, if... You will have mass on me, Lord. But now, you, you can, but right now through Christ, you can come boldly to the throne of grace and ask and receive mercy and grace. Say amen. All right. Having canceled, now Jesus took the written code, the regulation which was written against us, and he nailed, the Bible says, with its regulations, the regulations, 
you shall not do this, you shall do this, if you do this, then these things will come. Da, 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 da. I mean, a lot of stuff. The written code and its regulations. Now, if you want to know, you read Deuteronomy 28. All the laws and the curses are written. Amen? <clears throat> and then it says, that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is why we preach the gospel. This is why the, we don't preach the gospel. I mean, we, we, we find so many people preaching the gospel for the sake of preaching the gospel. We don't know why we are preaching the gospel. We preach the gospel to help people. You don't need to shout so much. You don't, yes, if you want to shout, you can shout. But what I'm saying is not the mode, of, the mode of speech or how you speak. But it's about clarity. So that someone can understand that without Christ, no life. He who has the Son has life. And he who does not have the Son of God has no life in him. Because in him, the Son of God is the way, is the truth, and is the life. No man shall be able to seek God. No man shall receive forgiveness of sins. No man shall have access to the Father except through Christ. This is the reason why we preach the gospel. Because how will they know or how will they believe in Jesus whom they do not understand? What the devil has done is he has uh, made the gospel look like, le like religion. Do you know Jesus? Do you know the power of the cross? Do you know the meaning of resurrection? Do you know who you are in him? Do you think these are simply words? God, full of mercy, who does not change, he revealed his will through this so that you, by reading it, you may understand. And when you understand, you will know your position. And when you know your position, then you will know how to fight a good fight of faith. You understand what I'm saying? Hmm? Opposed to us, he took it away, nailing it to the cross. Wow. Verse 15. And having disarmed. Now he goes to another point. He disarmed the powers and the authorities. And he made public spectacle of them. He disarmed every power that exists in the world. Whatsoever name that you may name it, right from the king of darkness called Lucifer to all his agents, according to the names that you may call them, here in Buganda, you may call them Nyabinji, Mayembe, Vitega, and whatever, but in the Bible calls them principalities, powers of darkness, and every evil force is ruling. Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus made you alive. That is number one. Number two, he forgave you your sins. Now, he made you righteous. Number three, he took away everything that condemned you. He nailed it on the cross. He did not only do that. Number four, he went ahead and disarmed the powers of darkness and all principalities. He disarmed them for your sake. He disarmed. He went right to hell and disarmed the powers of darkness.
Paul writes to the Corinthians and he says, brothers, I don't want you to be ignorant of the devil's schemes. Devil will make sure that he will, he will try everything. He will make sure that he will appear bigger than what he is right now. He wants to make sure, I mean, he, he wants you to believe that he's still the great lion. According to Psalms 91. That old lion, the ancient lion. But look, God, through Jesus, along with Jesus, did this for us. I, I, I don't have time, but I would have dwelt on this more than anything else, but I have to go on and preach what I came to preach about. Having disarmed, now the word disarm means to make powerless, to render useless, and toothless. Having disarmed, took away his power, his authority, his weapons of mass destruction towards you, towards your descendant, he disarmed them for your behalf and every authority. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross, by the cross. In other words, whenever you look at the cross, it's a perpetual reminder of what we are and what Christ did for us so that we may not give room to the enemy to torment us. Ladies and gentlemen, right now people can go to hell by their choice. They choose to go to hell, but otherwise it's not sin. Sin, Christ dealt with it at the cross. People right now give room to the enemy, entertain him because of their own choice. They, they, just, they just don't want to know. They don't want to know. You are free. Now listen, to, listen, look at what that word says, verse 16. Therefore, therefore, since the cross since the cross, I mean, since Christ went on the cross and did all those things for us, therefore, now, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat and drink or with regard to religious festival, to the things in the Old Testament. Let no one judge you, condemn you, or threaten you, or mislead you because of the way in the Old Testament used to worship, or what the Old Testament says. Whatsoever is in the Old Testament, here he goes on says, like the new moon celebration, or the Sabbath, people will come and say, you know, you have to worship on the Sabbath, you know, he says the Sabbath, they are talking what they don't know. Sabbath means rest. Sabbath means rest. And man can never get rest in the day. Every day has its burdens. Enough challenges. You can't get rest by resting on the, on the bed. We get rest internally, inside. My peace I give you. And that peace comes from knowing who Christ is, what he has done, who am I, the privileges that he has given me. And because of that, no matter what happens to me, yes, troubles may come, challenges may come, but inside me, I am reminded of who Christ is. And I am confident that even this will come to pass. Because greater is he in me 
greater is he who is in me than the one who is coming against me. Now, when you reach to that moment, now you have peace. That is where peace comes. Peace is not automatic. Peace is built in. It's a situation which, you, which comes as a result of your faith in him. Then our, then our faith in him brings peace. Amen? In the midst of trials, in the midst of challenges. Verse 17. All these were shadows. Now he's talking about the Old Testament. Like the Sabbath, the religious festivals, the written codes, the regulations in the Old Testament, the Haifa, the killing of a bull called Haifa, the sprinkling of blood, the sacrifice of the lamb. All these were shadows of the things that were to come. These were shadows. Of the things that were to come. The reality, however, the reality of the Old Testament, however, is found in the personhood called Christ. That's why I put my confidence, I put my hope, I put my trust, I put all my life in Him, Jesus Christ, because I know He who overcame the grave for me, will be able to take me to eternity. And he will protect me from everything. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. Otherwise, you wouldn't have given that lousy hand clap. Come on, give God a mighty hand clap. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, get no Christ. Understand Jesus. Read your word. I see so many teachings really, dis, I mean, disarming people, disarming children of God of their rights by reminding them, and people are so focused, on, I mean, they are so demon-oriented, curse-oriented, defeat-oriented, rather than being Christ-oriented. Others are taught how sinful they are all the time. Instead, of, and, and, and they become sin conscious, demon conscious, weak conscious, curse conscious, rather than becoming holiness conscious, Christ conscious. Amen. The devil knows to disarm you. He knows how to disarm you by speaking. And he will bring people to stand on the pulpit. Because he knows that some of you will not go back to Sabo. <laughs> you will not go back to the shrine. But what he says, he says, I will wait for you. And I will get a building or a gathering. I will put there in a name. In a, with a biblical notion. For the temple of the Christ Jesus. And the Bible says, because they are speaking from the worldly point of view, people of the world will listen to them. Because they are speaking from the worldly point of view, people will listen to them. And they will love to listen to them. Because they are talking what they understand. Things of the spirit are dis discerned by the spiritual people. Amen. So that's why they, the Bible says many will throng around them to listen because they are speaking what they understand. We know they are there. They happened. But the Bible says Jesus disarmed them. Who do I believe? Should I believe them? Or should I believe this? 
I am a servant of Christ. The purpose of the church is to go out and preach the good news. And that good news is in Christ. The reason of the church, the existence of the church, the reason why the church exists on earth, ladies and gentlemen, above everything else, is to be the light. Which way? The light to tell people this is the way. And that light is found in Christ. John chapter 1, he says, in him was the light. And that light became the life of men. We are supposed to explain Christ, talk Christ, tell people the cross, why it happened, so that they may have life. Amen? But we have gone into so much as the church. We have gone into talking about curses we don't understand, talking about the law, talking about this. Talk, uh, we, we, we are a modern, we become a modern shrine talking about demons more than we talk about Christ. You find a whole service talking about demonology, cassiology. And then at the end of the day, they say, but Jesus, if you pray, then you pray to Jesus a lot, and then Jesus will help you. Amen. Amen. This is why you exist, ladies and gentlemen. Challenges will be there. Situations will be there. But victory is imminent. Victory is imminent. And you'll never be disappointed. The Bible says those who hope in the Lord will not be disappointed. Right now, you may seem like you're disappointed, but that's not the end of it because the end will justify the means. Not yet. It's not yet over. Glory be to God. Then he says, these were the shadows of things to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Now, let me just give you one example of the reality of the things. Now, let's go to the book of Numbers. You know, the book of Numbers is a picture of the risen Christ. The book of Numbers is where the crucified Christ is revealed. In the book of Numbers, <clears throat> Numbers, Numbers chapter, Numbers chapter one, <clears throat> Numbers chapter one. Uh, Genesis reveals Christ as the creator. Exodus reveals Christ as the slain lamb, the lamb of God. Leviticus reveals Christ as the high priest who mediates between God and man. I said Genesis reveals Christ as the beginning. He is the creator. Exodus, Christ the Lamb that is slain to redeem you out of Egypt from the hands of Pharaoh into the promised land. Leviticus, Christ our high priest who stands between us and God. Amen. Amen. So that if the high priest is holy, all of us are holy. If the high priest is good, all of us are good. So that's why Christ becomes our high priest. The numbers, Christ, the crucified one on the cross. Now I'm going to show you in, in Numbers chapter 1, Oh, 
hold me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Numbers chapter 1, I'm just trying to, uh, I, I, I didn't get the verse, so I will read it. I will just go there and see the scripture. Now, uh, uh, the book of Numbers was written after, uh, 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 after the children of Israel came out of Egypt. When they left Egypt, around two years and some few months when they have come out of Egypt. And they have been walking. Anyhow. Amen? But God, when they came to the mount, to, to, to the desert of Sinai, God told the children of Israel in verse 1, the Lord spoke to Moses in the tent of meeting. In the tent of meeting in the desert of Sinai, on the first day of the second month of the second year, after the Israelites came out of Egypt, he said, take a census of the whole community by their clans and families, listing every man by name, one by one. You and Aaron are to number by their divisions, and all, all men in Israel, 20 years old or more, who are able to serve in the army. Now, God tells them, Moses and Aaron, take a census to find out how many fighting men we have in, um, in, a, in Israel. And then they went ahead and counted, and the number is given. I will not read everything. Um, I will just jump to verse 44. Uh, uh, and then he says, the conclusion, he say, uh, I mean, the, uh, I will read the conclusion of the matter. These were the men counted by Moses and Aaron. Now, these men are up there. I've jumped, I've jumped the whole chapter because of time. So, they, they are trying to list them. I mean, they listed them. These were the men counted by Moses and Aaron and the 12 leaders of Israel. Each one representing his family. All the Israelites, 20 years and old, they repeat again. They make an emphasis here. The, all the Israelites, 20 years old or more, who were able to serve in Israel's army, were counted according to their families. The total number was 600. Now, the common word here is who can fight. So in other words, they have come into the desert of Sinai. God who sees what is going to happen, he knows you're going to need fighting men. He knows you're going to need fighting men. But these people don't know that there are battles to encounter. Serious battles. But how are you going to fight them? So anyway, Moses lists down and he gives the number, total number, which was 600 and, uh, and, 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 and 3,550. And the families of Levi, he says, no, the family of Levi, However, we are not counted along with them because it represents the priesthood. The servants of God, don't, 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 don't count them. Amen? For them, they will not fight the physical battles. For them, they will fight the spiritual battle. Hallelujah. So in other words, don't count them. Mm -hmm. Let me jump. Um, the, uh, let me jump to 52. The, the Israelites are to set up their, however, verse 51, j j just to bring out my point. Whenever the tabernacle is to move, the Levites are to take it down, and whenever the tabernacle is to set up, the Levites shall do it. Anyone else who goes near it shall be put to death. So in other words, Moses, have you counted the children of Israel? Yeah. Okay. You know all the men were able to fight? Yes. Now, all right. Now, listen to me, Moses. Only the Levites will surround the tent of tabernacle and every furnishing, uh, 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 every holy furnishing. The rest should not do that. Now, the rest of the people, together along with the fighting men, he goes to 51, the Israelites are to set up their tents by divisions, each man in his own camp under his own standard. 
The Levites, however, are to set up their tents around the tabernacle of the testimony so that wrath will not fall on the Israelite community. The Levites are to be responsible for the care of the tabernacle of the testimony or the tabernacle of, the, of God. The Israelite did all this just as they were told by Moses. Chapter 2. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, the Israelites are to camp around the tent of meeting. The tent of meeting. Or the tent of tabernacle. Some distance away from it, each man under his standard with the banner of his family. And then he started. On the east, I'll just get some people. I'll just get some people. Just to show you what the, the power of the cross. I'll just get, I'll use the, the, the worshipers. Come. Amen. You can come this side here. <clears throat> uh, bring me that. Oh, yep. Yeah. I don't know what you call the stool. Come with it there. And the chair as well. The white chair. Harry. Yeah, please let me get like 12 people from there. But anyway, you're not able, you're not enough. I also get some people from here. Jonathan, come, you come. How many are you? One, two, three, six, nine, three more. Ten, eleven, twelve. Now let's assume, put that thing in the middle. Mm. Just there. A little bit uh, this side. Pull it back. There. Put the chair as well. Let's assume this represents the sanctuary, the tabernacle, and the Levites. Uh, you are the Levite. You sit there. Represents the high priest. Amen? Mm hmm. Now God comes and says, Moses, now arrange the children of Israel. They should not move anymore the way they want. Because ahead lies some battles. You are going to, fight to, serious, to have serious battles. But in order to overcome the battle, you are, I'm going to arrange you in a certain way which will be a picture of the things to come. The picture of the things to come. And then he said, um, on the east, now on the east, yes, Jonathan, go on the east, stand where that white line begins from. No, no, this way, this way. On the, this is the east. Yes. Uh, stand where it begins from. Uh -huh. Where it begins from. Exactly. That is the east. On the east, toward the sunrise, let the division of the camp of Judah, in other words, Judah, now Jonathan is Judah, let the camp of Judah or the tribe of Judah be there. Now I will jump because of time. Um, uh, verse 5. The tribe of Ishak, Isaac will camp next to them. Now you are Isaac, the tribe of Isaac. Mm. And the leader of the people of Isaac is Nathaniel. But anyway, for us, we know now. No, just be close to here. Just be a little bit closer, closer. Okay, that's good. And then also the tribe of Zablun. Or Zablan. You are the tribe of Zablan. And the Bible says, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the leader of Zablan is Eliab. And together, there were 57, 400 people. You know, these are, uh, these are uh, uh, the, the tribes, Judah, uh, 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 what? Is, Isha, Isaac, and 
and, Zabl and Zablan. Amen? Yes. Uh, and then on the south, he says on the south, the division of the camp of Reuben. Now you're going to be Reuben. You stand there. Yep. Uh -huh. So God, God, God is telling Moses, please let the people stand like that. Uh, uh, Reuben. And then who? Also another tribe. Um, another tribe of Luben. Luben. Where, where are we? Uh, yes. Under the division. And the leader is Elzul, son of Shadiah. Okay. <clears throat> then also the tribe of Simeon. Now, uh, uh, you are the tribe of Simeon. Okay. That is good. You look so good. You look like Simeon. Amen. <laughs> okay. The tribe of Simeon. And also, their leader was Shel Shelumiel, son of uh, 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 Zurushedai. Uh -huh. Then also the, trib the tribe of God. Now, Ugundi, you are the tribe of God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Good. God is telling Moses. And then, on the west side, this is where the west side is. On the west side, the division of the camp of Ephraim. Where the Ephraimites? Yes. Ephraim. Yeah, you stand where that thing begins from. The white thing. Exactly. Parallel. Exactly. In, in between is the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Mm, you should be a distance away from it, okay? No, no, no. You stay there. You stay there. But look, look, look at me. Make sure you are parallel with those people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo, glory be to God. Are we together? Where are we now? Verse what? Huh? 18. 18. Mm. Then also, uh, uh, the leader of Ephraim, his number was that. The tribe of Manasseh. Now, who is the Manasseh? You are the Manasseh now. Yes. A bit closer, a bit closer, a bit closer. There. Uh. Then, and uh, Gamriel, son of Peshur's uh, Pedazul, he was the leader. Then the tribe of Benjamin. Now you are Benjamin. Benjamin from Benjamin. Great. Uh, make a bit of, uh, give some space, just a little bit. Now we also in the middle, a little bit. Okay. All right. Hmm. That's not so bad. Then God told Moses. On the north side will be the division of the camp of Dan, the tribe of Dan. Chisache, you are the tribe of Dan. Again, I am Mumaso Wali. Mumaso Wali. Oh, you made it out. You got no daddy. Ah, wow. We didn't get a cannon, Katono. We didn't get a cannon, Katono. Otio. Otio. Hmm. Mm, glory be to God. Mm. And the people, of, the leader of the people of Dan is Haziel. Uh, Haziel, son of Amishadai. Hey, those are powerful names. Some of you women, write those names because you will give them to your children. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Next, the tribe of Asher. Asher, uh, Barbara, or, or Gundi, Maureen, the tribe of Asher. Huh? Okay, I mean Barbara, you go there in front. Okay, you can face me, you guys. Cut immediate Masoga Chisachi, Mumasoga Chisachi. Oh, Tio. Kati mutunule no mwabali yeye mutunule no mutunuli mutuke mutunuli muri kafade bonga mutunude mbantu 
Chili oke, okay? oke okay, kari. Anti, nzo kutawa comfortable. Wanga mori nta nzo kumura wanga gati vana angi. Nzo singa nzo zisi amu bichi bo subu kaka de sawa zuni. Echi kompe ne chini pita ko. Okama. Ne singa bo yaga la singa nzo kwenye gani? Ne kaka ukwaga la kukole kwe chi kukole bwe. Mori nto fa yo. Ucha sisi nzo okuchusa. No. Oya aku dawa. Oke kari. Akati dawa. Kola bo. Uva yo ama. Ukaratu gua gua dawa. Wanu waba dali. Okay. Ori ya mulevi. So on the north, the last one, the tribe of Naphtali will be next. Now you are the Naphtali. Then you meet the Masoga Babra Wali. Babra, we don't get a call. My bigger cousin. Just push a little bit back. Uh, next search, just a little bit, a little bit back. Okay, that's that's awesome. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, verse 34, um, these are the Israelites counted according to their families, all those in the camp by their division. Uh, however, um, uh, uh, sorry, the Levites, however, were not counted along with other Israelites as the Lord had commanded. So, verse 34, so the Israelites did everything the Lord commanded Moses. That is the way they encamped under their standards. And that is the way they set out each with his own clan and each with his own family. So from there, God told them, from now, first count of men who are able to fight. Because you are going to find, you are going to encounter serious battles. After counting them, Secondly, organize the children of Israel. From now onwards, they will no longer move the way they wanted to move. But this is how they will move. What do you see when you are there? What do you see? Exactly. In other words, God was telling them, through the cross, you will conquer. Through the cross, you are going to conquer. Amen? Now, because of time, I can't go anywhere. I mean, I can't go far, but I would have showed you the preceding chapters, what happened. Where the moment they did this, then God started bringing out things. That's for example, um, in chapter 6, chapter 6 reveals Christ as the Nazarene who will be in the center. Christ as the Nazarene. They talk about in chapter 6, they talk about the Nazarene, the chosen one who is supposed to be in the center. Amen? In chapter 6, 22 to 27, God commands the high priest in there to always stand and bless these children. How? Put it for us there. Amen? Now, in chapter 26, the Nazarene. In other words, the chosen ones, the high priest, people dedicated to do the work of God. And also how the high priest there must come out and bless these children whenever they are going out. And he says in chapter 6, verse 22, chapter 6, verse 22, the Lord said to Moses, up to 27, the Lord said to Moses, go on, go on. Tell Aaron, the high priest, I told you, high, uh, 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 high priest represents Christ. Tell Aaron now, this time, tell Aaron there, tell Aaron and his sons, this is how you are to bless the Israelites. This is how whenever they are moving and when every morning, this is how you are to bless them. You stand up and you bless them. The word to bless means to empower, to make them strong, to make them legible, to make them able. Give them that empowerment. And he says, verse 23, bless them in this manner. The Lord bless you. 
You know, always we say, the Lord bless you. The word blessing, the word to bless means to empower, but there should be a word that follows. Amen? Bless the children of Israel like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. Uh -huh. The Lord make his face shine on you, upon you. And the Lord be gracious, full of mercy, to forgive you, not to see any wickedness in you, but to empower you, only to empower you, only to make you strong. Uh -huh. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The moment they made this, God told Aaron, now always, these are the words you are supposed to speak to them. And because of that, you know what? In verse, in verse, I mean in chapter, I mean, uh, yeah, after they did that in chapter 9, you will read, we see God told Moses, now tell the children of Israel to sacrifice a lamb which is Christ. Then in 20, celebrate the risen Christ. In chapter 20, that's where we see the golden serpent. I mean the bronze serpent. Raise the serpent. When the children of Israel sinned, raise the golden serpent. In other words, God told Aaron and told Moses, get a golden serpent and put it in, in the middle of the camp of the children of Israel. Get they, when they sinned, that sin brought snakes and started biting them. They started dying, which is a representation of the venom which the devil injected in us, the sin which brings death. So when sin started killing them, when they sinned against the Lord, God told Moses that Moses tell Aaron to raise, to make a, a, a bronze snake and put it on the pole. Rise it above in the center so that wherever they are, all the tribes of Israel, they may look towards the center and they be healed. So in other words, whatever situation, is it about sin? Is it about situation? Is it about whatever? Always do not look anywhere else for your salvation is at the center, which is Christ the center of it all. Are you in trouble? Look at Jesus. Are you condemned? Look at Jesus. Are you sick? Look at Jesus. Are you in trouble? Look at Jesus. In chapter 20, that's where you find the golden, I mean the bronze serpent. Amen? Now, because of time, you know, I'm trying to run. Wow. Jesus, God, hid us in Christ. Then, these are the things they found. In chapter 20, from verse 14 to 20, they, 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 the Israelites reached in the, uh, at, at the border of Moab and other tribes. Number one, they faced rejection. From their own brothers, the Edomites. Rejections and betrayal. You know what? They overcame that rejection and betrayal through the cross. Because they were walking, walking through the cross. In chapter 21, the Israelites meet serious battles now. Battles from different. We can, we can just read there just a little bit. Man, wow. From 21, we see the battle of Erad, whereby now they met serious opposition from the Canaanite king called Erad. They, the Bible says from verse 21, when the Canaanite king, uh, king of Erad, who lived in the Negev, heard that Israel was coming along the road to Ethereum, to Ethereum, he attacked the Israelites 
and captured some of them. Then the Israelite made this vow to the Lord, if you will deliver these people into our hands, we will totally destroy this city. The Lord listened to the Israelite plea and gave the character over to them. They completely destroyed them. Amen? Then in, um, um, in, 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 in chapter 10, they meet Moab. They destroyed in verse, in, uh, sorry, in, in, verse, in, in verse 10. In verse 21, the Israelites meet Sihon, king of the Amorite. You know, they are moving. They are moving like that. They meet battle after battle. Battle after battle. But every battle they encountered, they crushed. Every battle, they crushed. They crushed them. They crushed them. Amen? So they meet Sihon, king of the Amorite. They meet Ogog, who was the king of... Um, 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 who was the king? Is it, is it the king of uh, Moab? They crushed. Now they meet the final battle. The spiritual battle. The physical battle are over. Then the spiritual battle now comes in. In, verse, in chapter 22. Then the Israelites traveled to the plains of Moab and camped along the Jordan across the Jericho. Now Balak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was terrified because there were so many people. Indeed, Moab was filled with dread because, the Israelites, because of the Israelites. The Moabites said to the elders of the Midian, this horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, son of Zippor, who was king of Moab at that time, sent messengers to summon Balaam, son of Boar, who was at, the, who was at Pithor, near river in the native land. Uh, in the native land. Balak said, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land have settled next to me. Now come and put a curse. Now, you see, all this way, they were fighting different battles. Now the Israelites are going to fight the spiritual battle. The spiritual battle. The first ones were about sins. God healed them. Now, it, another battle was the battle of... The battle of... <laughs> physical battles of kings they crushed now the next battle is a spiritual battle you know what because of time i'll add on next week okay because of time god bless you i, I know right now we are supposed to be going into um next week next week we are we are by the way beginning the uh, the uh, 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 empowerment week financial empowerment amen but I will try to make sure that I, 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 I finish up this topic for you so that you may see the benefits of the cross Balak applies spiritual battle curse he is going to use divination witchcraft and cursiology cursing Still, the cross crushes. The cross crushed physical battles. The cross crushed sin battle. The cross crushed sickness. The cross is yet to crush spiritual or demonic battles. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Always walk in the cross. Never get out of the cross. Let the blood of Jesus cover you always. Be in the blood. Always call on the name of the Lord. In every situation, speak in the name. Are you in torment? Pray in the name. Are you in serious battle? 
Bind everything in the name of Jesus. Are you in need of some things? Loosen it in the name of Jesus. Amen? Knowing that he did it all for you at the cross. I'm teaching you this so that you may believe in Jesus. And by believing, you may have life. Amen? Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. You have fullness of Christ. Greater is he in you than the anything else in the world. You will face battles, but you will overcome them. You will face situations. You will overcome them. Tears may last during the night, but joy will come in the morning. For sure I know that the masses of God are ever new every morning. You are more than conquerors in Christ. Do not walk your heads bow. Walk your heads high. Knowing that you are the righteousness of God. Knowing that you are the children of God. Knowing that the power to, de to, to, to denounce the power to, 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 to punish the evil forces is in your laps. Walk with your head high. Knowing that everything that comes your way, the Bible has never promised that you will not face battles. It says you will face battles, but you will overcome them. The Bible has never said that you will not encounter enemies. It says your enemies will come. In fact, they will come in group and in one direction. But at the encounter of you, they will flee in several directions. In other words, situations, troubles, hardships will come. But the end result is you are more than a conqueror. At the end of it all, at the end of it all, at the end of it all, it will be you standing when everything else is, is gone. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give God a mighty hand clap. God bless you.